Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the Samsung dryer thermistor. It's going to be a very easy repair and it should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new dryer thermistor. The dryer thermistor is what tells the control board what temperature the dryer is operating at. The main reason to be changing it out is if it's going bad and the dryer isn't running at the temperature you selected. In order to get to the part, we have to take the dryer apart. So we're going to use our Phillips screwdriver and go around back to remove the screws. Now that we have the screws out, we can remove the top. All you have to do is pull the top back so a couple inches so it gets free of the brackets and then you can lift it off and set it aside. Now that we have the top off, we can take the control panel off. There's a few locking tabs across the back. We're going to lift up on them to release them and then lift the panel forward. Once you have the control panel released, we can pull it out a little bit so we can disconnect the wire harness. All you have to do is press on this locking tab and pull the two ends apart. Once you have it disconnected, we can set the control panel aside. We can open up the dryer door, and we need to remove these two screws at the bottom. We're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to take them out. Now that we have those two screws removed, we can close the dryer door and remove the upper four screws. Once you have the four screws out, we can take the front panel off. You may have to open up the door and lift the front panel a little bit so it comes off these two little locking tabs. Once you have those free, you can let it drop down a little bit. We can close the door again and drop it down enough so we can disconnect the wire harness for the door switch. There's no locking tab or anything on this one, so all you have to do is pull it off and let it set out of the way. Once you have that disconnected, we can lift the front panel off the three mounting brackets on the bottom. With the front panel off, now we can remove this panel that holds the control panel. We're going to use our Phillips screwdriver and take the screws out. Now that we have all the screws that hold the support panel in, we have to get ready to take it out. First thing we're going to do is disconnect the wiring harness from the light bulb socket. All you have to do is reach down and pull it off. And then we have to take it out of the little retainer. So you can just twist these and release these. Once you have them open, you can just pull the wire harness out. Now we're going to lift the panel off so we can take the ones off from the back side. Now that we have the panel rotated forward a little bit, we can see that there's these four connectors. All we're going to do is untwist them so we can take the wire harnesses out. Once you have all of them disconnected, we can pull the front panel off. And then we're going to take the wire harness and drape it over the side of the machine so it's out of the way. In order to remove the bulkhead on the bottom of the dryer, we have to remove this one screw with the Phillips screwdriver from the blower housing. And then we have to disconnect the wire harness connector for the moisture sensor. And that's on the other side. All you have to do is press this locking tab and separate the two connectors. Once you have those disconnected, we're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to remove these four screws that hold the bulkhead to the cabinet. Now that we have everything disconnected from the bulkhead, we can lift it off the cabinet. There is a tab on each bracket that we have to lift up and pull out. Once 
Once you have both sides off, you can lift the front bulkhead off and set it aside. Now that we have the bulkhead out of the way, we can reach in underneath the drum on each side. We're going to grab the idler pulley and pull it towards the outside of the dryer and release the tension on the belt so we can take it off the pulleys. Now that we have the belt taken off the pulleys, we can use it to guide the drum assembly out of the dryer. All you have to do is lift up on it so we can guide the drum through these little cutouts. Now that we have the drum out of the way, we have access to the part. It's located behind the blower wheel. We can pull off the wiring harness. You want to make sure you remember that the blue wire is on the top and the red wire is on the bottom. Once you pull the connector off, you can slide it out of the way so we can take the thermistor out. The thermistor is only held in by one screw, so we're going to use our Phillips screwdriver and take it out. Once you have the screw removed, all you have to do is tilt it forward and lift it out of the blower housing. Here's the old dryer thermistor next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. To put the new dryer thermistor in, all you have to do is set it down into the slot in the blower housing and rotate it up into the housing. Once you have it in place, you can put the screw in and then tighten it down with our Phillips screwdriver. Once you have the screw tightened down and the thermistor mounted, we can reconnect the wire harness. All you have to do is plug it back in. Remember the blue goes on the top and the red goes on the bottom. Once you have it on in a good connection, we can put the dryer back together. Now we can put the drum back in the dryer. You want to make sure that the pink is towards the back. The belt is centered in the drum. Then you can carefully use the belt to lift the drum up and guide it back into the dryer. Once you have the drum on the rear rollers, you can set it down and let the belt go. You want to make sure that the grooves are against the drum, so when you route it through the pulley, it's routed properly. We can reach in and route the belt through the pulleys. Same thing as before, we're going to grab the idler pulley and pull it over towards the outside of the machine. Then we can make a loop with the belt and put it around the pulleys. Now we can put the front bulkhead back on. We're going to hook in these two tabs on the left side of the dryer. Once you have those in, you may have to lift up on the drum a little bit so the drum goes over the rollers. Once you have it in place, we can lift up the tabs on the other side and put them in. Now that we have the bulkhead back in place, we can use our Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in. Now that we have the bulkhead mounted, we can reattach all the wires. On the right side of the dryer, at the bottom, we're going to reattach the wire harness for the moisture sensor. All you have to do is plug them back together and make sure you get a good connection. Now we can come up on the left side and grab the main wiring harness that went across the front, and we're going to put them through the clips across the front of the bulkhead. All you have to do is put them in and twist them. Remember to leave your door switch kind of hanging in the middle. Once you have that in place, we can reconnect the wire harness to the light socket. You can't mess this one up. It's a quarter inch on one side and three sixteenths on the other. So all you have to do is line it up and push it on so you get a good connection. This connector is for the control panel, so we'll connect that later. With the wires properly routed, we can put the support bracket back on. We're going to line it up with the screw holes, and we have to attach the wire harnesses to these holders. So we're going to lift it up a little bit and put those on before we put the screws in. All you have to do is grab the wire harnesses and put them onto the holders and twist them so they lock in place. Once you have that one in place, we can do the one for the control board.
And then you want to make sure that this little connector goes out to the front so we can reconnect it in a minute. And then we can rotate the support bracket down into place. There's a couple locking tabs on each end. You want to make sure those go into the frame holes. Once you have it in, we can go around with our Phillips screwdriver and put the screws in. You may have to lift up the control board cover on this one to get the holes to line up. With the support bracket back in place, we can put the front panel on. To put the front panel back on, all we have to do is set it onto the three brackets at the bottom of the dryer and rotate it up. You want to stop a couple inches away from the bulkhead so we can grab the door switch wiring harness and plug it in. There's no locking tab or anything on this one, but make sure that this little notch here lines up with that notch. And all you have to do is push it together to get a good connection. And then we can push the panel up the rest of the way. And you want to push it up so these locking tabs hold it in place. Once you're sure it won't fall off, we can grab our Phillips screwdriver and put the four screws in across the top. Now the way the top of the panel is secure, we can open up the door and replace the two screws that hold the front panel onto the lint filter housing. Once you have those two in, we can close the dryer door and then we can put the control panel back on. To put the control panel on, we're going to set it on top of the front panel so we can reach over and connect the wire harnesses that connect the control to the dryer. All you have to do is push them together so they lock into place. Make sure you get a good connection. And then we can lift the panel up. You want to make sure that these locking tabs right here go into these openings right here on the top of the panel. Once you have the tabs in place, we can rotate the control panel up and snap it onto the support bracket. Once you have it in place and it's secure, we can put the top back on. To put the top back on, we're going to set it down on top of the frame and then we're going to push it forward so the lip right here goes underneath that bracket. Once you have it in and lined up, you can push it forward and then we can use our Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in. Now that we have the top back on, we can plug the dryer back in and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.